there's some magic in the way you teach. Oh, and, sweet. And you somehow encourage the students to take themselves seriously. Can you describe how you do that? Well, magic, I think, is important in the world anyhow, Lola. I mean, maybe that's what we're here to do, is create magic. Uh, for me, regardless if I'm teaching a, you know, a very similar topic time and time again, I'll find a new way to approach it. Um, that's what keeps things fresh for me, and I think that's what keeps things fresh for students. Sometimes I'll ask and say, listen, do you want to do this again? Do we want to talk about landscape proportion again? And the cues will maybe even come from them and say, I think so. We haven't done this this way before. Sure, let's try this. Or could we talk about maybe landscape from a different color perspective? Mm -hmm. so and that makes me grow as an artist as well. Right, so you're very flexible and responsive to what the students are asking for. I think we have to be. Yeah. I think that's why we have students. Mm -hmm for a long time. And when you are working with them, I mean, do you think that you see something in their work that they don't see? I, I find it really interesting that they're taking themselves really seriously. And that doesn't always happen. I mean, many of our students do, but more in your class. So, so why is that? Like, what is it about the way you interact with them? or, you know, the things you say to them that make them feel more confident, I guess. But one of the things that we do at the end of, I would say 90% of the classes, is have a critique. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the evening classes go a little, a little longer than the actual time allotted, but I don't mind. I find that what the students say is that we find the critique the most important part mm -hmm. of the class, or one of the most important mm -hmm. parts of the class. And that doesn't mean it has to come from a negative perspective. You know, as, as we were talking about magic earlier, there's magic in what people are doing. And I often say, you know, during the process of a class, you couldn't be doing anything better than being here with your paints out and working on your ideas mm -hmm. and being creative. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think the critique is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it certainly was a part of things when I was in university. Mm -hmm. And you have to get used to that if you're going to have your work shown to the public, there will be critical um, attention paid to it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And can you identify in some of the students, you know, when it was or how it happened that they suddenly said, gee, I'm an artist now. Is there, is there a moment or is it so gradual that you actually can't perceive when it, it happens? I think it's a little bit gradual. You know, mm -hmm. I think it, I, it may even be something as simple as I'm afraid to sign my work on the front. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we have a discussion a year or two later, how should I sign my work? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that seems like a really small thing. No, no, no but that is a statement of mm -hmm. confidence. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So, can you describe some of the students who have transitioned from from being, you don't have to name them, but from being uh, amateurs to seeing themselves as professionals and actually selling work. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, in particular, when I'm teaching a contemporary painting class, uh, that's, that's really where folks seem to end up. Um, I have a couple of folks that are lawyers, uh, one woman in particular, and in fact, I think her work is featured on the cover of our brochure. Mm -hmm. And one evening she brought in um, some lovely heavy body gold acrylic paint. Wow. And everyone else started sniffing around and they were fascinated by this paint. And the work that she created with this paint just sort of spun out of her fingers like mm -hmm. gold and mm -hmm. like precious metals. Uh, she's remarkable. I, there are a couple of folks that have come from, with, come from sales and IT backgrounds, mm -hmm. and I think that uh, they've made really remarkable transitions. And often they were folks that were told, you know, what you really need to do is get a business education, um, you can't make a career out of art. But here they are, maybe heading towards retirement, and they're very smart individuals, and they're looking at having 
a full-blown second career that they real this time that they really love. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Is there anyone who who is not at retirement age who's just decided to chuck their left brain career and, mm -hmm. and become an artist? Yes, we yes we have a number of those folks. I can think of, think of one fellow in particular, and he comes from a writing background, mm -hmm. uh, and I would almost describe his work. It was a little bit of a feeling of sort of an outsider approach to art making. And to me, um, one of the most important things about teaching is to never take the you out of your painting. I'm not looking to create a number of artists that are that do work just the way I do. I'm changing all the time. You know, I'm looking at new media now, and some of these folks are. This fellow is remarkable, what he's he's created in a very short space of time, maybe two and a half years. Mm -hmm. So he's gone from being a professional writer mm -hmm. to being a professional artist? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So you say that um, one of the things you impart to the students is never take the you out of your work. Mm -hmm. What are the other strong messages that you give them? I think to be positive about your work. Really understand, even if you've come from a critical life, and I think we can all relate to that somehow in terms of our, well in terms of our world experiences you know um, I it's life is remarkable but it's not always easy mm -hmm. you know the momentum and the imbalance of the ups and downs is what creates us and certainly if you're an artist it's what fuels your work yeah. mm -hmm. so I think that uh, you know maybe that approach and letting letting the space in the classroom be positive, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean seeing everything is wonderful mm -hmm. or isn't this just fabulous, mm -hmm. but there's always a comfortable way you can approach, mm -hmm. oh, I'm having a problem with this, mm -hmm. or, or you know, maybe try a different set of colors, or maybe you need to switch your imagery up for a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always a positive way to approach mm -hmm. what you're doing. Right, so mm -hmm. it sounds like you're always creating new possibilities for your students mm -hmm. that they might not be seeing for themselves. Yes, and I would say for myself as well too. Yeah. You're very lucky. I am. Mm -hmm. Yes, I really am, Mama. Absolutely. Absolutely.